What is going on guys? Today we're going to be doing another batch of load development here with another rifle. This is technically a Bushmaster, but it is a Sharps uh, upper receiver. And we're running an Odin 223 wild barrel in a 18 inch DMR profile, I believe. These are the rounds we're going to be shooting today. I have a couple of them marked for reasons that are for me to know. These are 53 grain VMAX, these are 55 grain Sierra Blitz Kings, these are 75 grain Hornady Boat Tail Hollow Points, and these are 73 grain Hornady ELDs. These are 53 grain Hornady Bullets as well, obviously. So, that's what we're going to be shooting today. This is intended to be a coyote rifle, probably going to change the scope at, on it at some point to something not so overkill but it'll work really good for load development. So this is what we're gonna be shooting. I am going to be running a Liberty Suppressors can on there. That's the Mystic, or the Infinity X, excuse me. And we're just gonna be shooting five shot groups, doing optimal charge weight tests, working up to max on each of these. Some of them I only have four rows to shoot, so not as many, but the 53 grain VMAX is what shot really well in initial testing, so that's the one that we're kind of focusing on. Got six groups of those, four of the rest. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I actually forgot to mention the powder earlier, I think. We're using Starline 556 brass. We are using various bullets, as we discussed previously. CFE 223 Hodgden powder. This is going to be the powder that we're using in all of them, as well as the same brass and the same primers. We're using Federal Small Rifle Match AR Rifle Match primers. So that's going to be all the brass powder and primers that we're going to be using, and the bullets are just going to vary as well as the charge weight. So we're going to go ahead and get started with the 53 grain V Max by Hornady and the charge weight is going to be 27.5 as always check your load manual and uh, get actual published load data don't just go off of what I'm doing this is just for my information and I'm just sharing it with you guys as we go along through it so let's go ahead and get this started I've got a chronograph set like five feet away get some velocity data and we'll go ahead and start shooting If we can keep everything under an inch today, I'll be really happy. Um, I did some uh, testing with a couple factory loads just to see what this gun might like to shoot right out of the gate to kind of save myself a little bit of time. And these 53 grain V, or I'm sorry, 53 grain <laughs> V Max is shot pretty good in factory ammo. So I figured I'd test some or do some preliminary testing at least with uh, these in hand loads. So we're just using some once fired Starline brass. This is not new brass. I just resized it with a full length resizer using some Forrester dies, chamfer and deburred the case mouth, hand primed them. I didn't use an expander or anything on them. I just went ahead and uh, used a full length sizer and then did the powder charge that we're gonna speak of and then we used a Forrester ultra micrometer cedar die to seat the bullet. So right out of the gate, uh, I wasn't a bad group, it wasn't a great group either, but we're going to keep shooting and hope that they shrink. I am just keeping track of velocity just kind of out of curiosity and we're going to continue to watch pressure signs as we go through. Hopefully there will be zero, but it's always good to check your brass um, as you shoot and continue to watch and make sure everything's going smooth and just stay safe. So we're going to go ahead and uh, load this next magazine. The next charge weight's going to be 27.8. We're going to be going in 0.3 grain increments for this bullet. Whenever we move to the ones that we only have four of, we're going to actually be moving in 0.4 grain increments, uh, making it a little bit larger, larger just to cover a wider range of the powder spectrum, or rather the, uh, the load spectrum with those bullets. But uh, it looks like the average velocity that we had right out of the gate, 3,037 feet per second with an extreme spread of 63 and a standard deviation of 23. That's, that kind of sucks. So we're gonna hope that that uh, changes here pretty quick. Go ahead and load the next mag, shoot the next group. Twenty seven point eight grains. Hundred eight. 
1,129. We had a really, really bad flyer on that one. I don't know what happened there. Average of all shots, 3,086 feet per second. Extreme spread of 74 feet per second and a standard deviation of 28 feet per second. I'm really hoping this uh, gets better because I loaded all these with the same powder. <laughs> so hopefully they'll get better because uh, if they don't, we are definitely going to be looking at other powders real quick. I just have a lot of CFE 223, so I kind of want to stick with it if I can. But it's looking like it might not... Uh, Show a whole lot of promise here. So we're gonna go ahead, load up the next group. It's gonna be 28.1 grains of CFE 223. It's like 64 degrees outside. So um, I'm almost encouraging a little bit of wind, just, just enough of a breeze to get the mirage from the suppressor to kind of go away because it's like boiling right now. Um, even though it's really not all that hot when you do uh, long strings of fire like this, even if, you know, Five shots on a lukewarm day can heat up pretty quick. Those suppressors like to contain heat for a while. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and load up the next bag. Still shooting 53 grain VMAX, working our way across the top of the target from left to right. It's gonna be 28.1, I believe I already said that. And gonna shoot five more. I might let this gun cool down for a little bit because <clears throat> it's not already looking very good, but uh, we're gonna keep shooting. are really bad considering what I saw the other day these are these are awful the last two were at least the first one was all right but uh, the group that I shot with the factory the ammo the other day was only three shots but they were all touching so it gave me a lot of promise for the barrel but got a lot of different stuff to test so it's not the end of the world we'll go ahead and uh, give the barrel a little while to cool down and then we'll, we'll probably actually we'll throw the barrel cooler in there for a little bit and then we'll keep going Okay, so I completely forgot to uh, connect my phone to the chronograph on this last group, so we have no velocity data for it, unfortunately, but hopefully we will start to see some better groups because this is pretty much sucking so far. So, hope for the best. Wish me luck. That's more like what I'm used to seeing. See, I I just don't understand that. All right, now we're on to 28.7 grains of CFE 223. So far, the velocities have been incredibly inconsistent, and our group sizes have pretty much sucked. So. I'm hoping something improves because otherwise we may just have to completely bail on this powder altogether. Really know what's going on guys this thing was shooting really really well the other day with most of the stuff that I put through it 
3159 has an average velocity 56 feet per second extreme spread and 19 feet per second standard deviation i think that's the first one we've had under 20 which is not something to be proud of but this is just not looking good so far okay 29 grains of cfe 223 with the 53 grain v max hope to god we get like one decent group out of this but kind of got a feeling it's probably not gonna happen but we'll keep our hopes up All right, so if you couldn't tell, I was thoroughly disappointed with that last one. Um, these are the 55 grain Sierra Blitz Kings, which is also a varmint bullet. I'm hoping it's not just a powder thing, because like I want to like CFE 223, but I've had really, really bad luck with it so far in a couple of guns. I have a lot of it, so it can be burner ammo. But if, if this bullet doesn't like it, and then the next two bullets still don't like it, then I think we've kind of got our culprit, because I know that these shot good out of factory ammo, and I know that those 53 grain bullets shot excellent in factory ammo. So, hopefully this will prove me wrong, but we will find out soon enough. Let's go ahead and shoot this first group. It is gonna be 26.8 grains of CFE 223 with the Sierra 55 grain Blitz King. Forgot my uh, cover. Didn't even get all my velocities on, on, on that one. The, uh, the tip was messed up on that first bullet, so I kind of, I don't want to say I was expecting a flyer, but if I saw one, I wasn't going to be surprised. But for both of them to fly out like that, I wasn't hoping to see that exactly. Those three went pretty tight, but then those other two did not. And I don't have an excuse for any of the bullets except for that first one to be a flyer. So we will continue on. Keep hoping and praying. Pray, pray, pray. <laughs> All right, so the next shot string is gonna be with uh, 27.2 grains of CFE 223. So extreme spread was 78 feet per second and a standard deviation of 27 feet per second with an average of 29.83. Our our spreads are just horrible. I just I don't think I don't think the guns liking this powder, or at least with these weights of bullets. I mean that's just that's not good. There's there's no other way to sugarcoat it. That just sucks. All right, next set's gonna have 27.6 grains of CFE 223. Well, things are still not going well. We had three right in there, grouping excellent, and then five ruined it. 
four and five ruined it. Gosh, standard deviation, 28 feet per second, extreme spread of 87. I think we need a different powder. I'm pretty sure that's the, that's the conclusion so far. I don't even really know if it's worth putting in the effort to shoot the rest of these. It's just not getting better, but we're gonna do it. We got them loaded, might as well. All right, one more. 28 grains of CFE 223 for the 55 grain Sierra Blitz King, and then we are moving on to the other ones. <laughs> Okay, no surprises. <laughs> Standard deviation of 35 feet per second and a, uh, a lot of brass laying on the ground. Uh, extreme spread of 99 feet per second and an average of 3124 feet per second. So um, thankfully moving on to other bullets, but unfortunately not moving on to other powders because I was really rooting for those. So I've got a feeling we're just gonna have to do this again another day. Have to try some different powder, but we're gonna move on. I think we're going to do the 73 grain ELDs first, shooting 25.3 grains of powder in 0.4 grain increments up to 26 and a half grains of CFE 223. So let's get the barrel cooled down and let's hit it. All right, we're gonna be shooting some heavier bullets here. 73 grain ELDs, which from what I understand are designed for the AR whereas the 75 grainers are way too long and they will not fit or they won't fit within a mag respectively without looking goofy and the ogive seat away below the case. But anyway, shooting 26 point, or I'm sorry, 25.3 grains of CFE 223 and we're going to work our way up in 0.4 grain increments up to 26 and a half. First grain is gonna be the low powder charge at 25.3 and we're gonna aim for the right side of the target. I take it back, we're gonna aim for the dead center. 2704 2704 2704 We're still getting some crappy groups. The velocity uh, spectrum's a little better. Extreme spread of 42 and a standard deviation of 15. That's actually an improvement, as much as I hate to say it, but we'll keep going. Even though it seems uh, kind of like a waste of time, we're gonna continue this. 73 grains, um, or 73 grain ELD, shooting 25.7 grains of CFE 223, and basically just blowing through ammo at this point. I mean, I'm gonna try to shoot him as best I can, but Lord knows it's kind of a waste of time. I also forgot to mention, this is actually Lapua brass on the uh, the 73 grain and the 75 grain bullets that we're shooting. The other two bullets that we shot were Starline, but these are actually Lapua 223 brass. 2,746 2,739 2,744 Just walking the line. Just getting rid of shells. <laughs> Alright, so that one, just for curiosity. Our extreme spread went right back up there. It's an average of 2759 feet per second with an extreme spread of 66 and a standard deviation of 24. On to the third one. All right, we're gonna keep this nightmare going with 26.1 grains of CFE 223. 
2,809. Can't get a single good group today. It's just embarrassing. The suppressor is uh, doing a great job of dirtying up everything that we're using, so that's a plus. One more group, and then we're moving on to the 75s. All right, 26.5 grains of CFE 223 is going to be our last load with this bullet. Then we're going to move on to the next. Yeah, I wouldn't shoot any higher of a charge than that. Those extractor marks are starting to look pretty gnarly on some of those, so I definitely call that max for sure. Moving on to the next one. All right, 75 grain Hornady hollow point boat tail. 25.3 grains of CFE 223. 2,793. I think it's the second decent group we've seen all day and we've shot like well over a dozen. But, you know what? Maybe there is hope. You just never know. Okay, this will be our second group with the 75 grain hollow point boat tail by Hornady. They're 25.7 grains of CFE in the case with the Lapu case. Hopefully we continue to see that trend that it showed us on the first group where it actually might group at all. 2,751. Are these things like splitting in half out of the barrel? Good lord. Some of the worst groups I've shot in a long time. 2,747. Goodness gracious. Yeah, I think it's about time to call us quits. Standard deviation was pretty good. <laughs> There's a standard deviation of 8 feet per second and an extreme spread of 23 with an average velocity of 2741. What are the odds? Alright, last group, or second to last group, is 26.1 uh, grain CFE 223. Just hoping I don't hit the GoPro right now because these things are stringing off so bad. 807. I think I'm actually just gonna call it. These things are stringing off so bad. I'm kind of scared I'm gonna shoot the GoPro and like there's so much inconsistency here. I just it just something's weird. It's making me nervous. So I'm not even sure if I'm gonna upload this. <laughs> this is so embarrassing. These groups are horrible. I don't know guys, there's something weird going on. This thing is um shooting really, really bad, so if I do upload this, thank you for watching. Um, if you did watch it all the way through, I am really sorry because this was like, this was something else. But anyway, um, maybe you learned something, maybe you didn't. Hopefully the next time we do a video on this gun, it's shooting bug holes because this was, this was awful. But the last time I took this thing out and shot it, it was a lot cooler, but it was about the only difference. Um, it was shooting, I mean, half inch groups consistently with a few different loads. Uh, they were three shot groups, but they were they were still shooting, you know, an average of, of about half an inch So it was uh, Pretty weird to see this today, but anyway, um I guess that's the video <laughs> Thank you guys for watching uh, stay risen take care and we'll see you soon